Hey guys, welcome back to another All Things Nerd podcast. As always, my name is name uh, is Nathan. And <laughs> I always mess up my name. My name is name. My my name is name. Welcome. <laughs> I'm also joined here with Caleb tonight, and um, tonight we're going to be talking about Sons of the Forest. Uh, Sons of the Forest is a direct sequel to the original The Forest game. Um, it is supposed to be released back uh, coming up in February of 2023. Uh, of 2023 it's been it's played up. already multiple times yeah next month i'm excited and um it's coming to the microsoft windows pc i don't know if it's been directly announced for consoles yet but i know so far is going to be the pc right now uh it's being published by new night and it's being developed by n night games so you know like i said it's a direct sequel to the forest so it's definitely going to be a action survival shooter crazy mutated zombie game where you're going to have to craft and survive. Um, right now we're going to take a look at a exclusive hands-on preview of the game from IGN. Um, anything you want to say before we get started, Caleb? Um, excited. Happy for it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Is it, you said it was new night. Yeah. New night. So they're, they're well, so new Night's huh. actually the publisher, but the I was developers like developers and night games. That's what I thought. I was like, wait, I'm confused for a minute. <laughs> Yeah, it's like so, is it they're just similar names then gotcha yeah i think it's like one's you know night and then one's day basically you know? maybe it's their own maybe it's their own game that they're publishing and that's their own that's their own developing team they're like at night we want to introduce ourselves to ourselves maybe something like that <laughs> it's just i don't know here's our game brought to you by us yeah <laughs> oh and actually fun fact it's actually being built on the unity engine uh i know the first one was i'm kind of surprised i'm not surprised the second one is because i'm like if you're so used to doing things on and using an engine for a long time it would make sense to keep using the same engine as you move on implementing new features uh, be able to re you know understand how to build a game yeah better than what you did before um something that would run better and using less processing like that's going to make a lot more sense yeah but I'm kind of surprised like a lot of games use Unity because I've, I've been playing Tarkov and I just found that out like a week ago that the game runs on Unity. I was like, that makes sense why it's so terrible. <laughs> so <laughs> this new wipe runs terribly anyways. But other than that, uh, I like it. Like I've used Unity myself like when I was getting into game design. I thought it was fairly easy to use. I got a little confused when I was using Unreal Engine. Uh, I tried using like Blender and other stuff. So um, I know Blender you can use more for like 3D modeling and whatnot, but yeah. I felt personally, if you're going to use other modeling softwares, um, Blender, um, I know there's some other 3D programs, it's been a while, but to me, Unity was very easy to use. So I could kind of see why that they've continued to use the Unity engine for uh, creating the second game, but I'm excited for it though. I'm surprised it's not the Unreal Engine because like everybody's been jumping on the Unreal Engine bandwagon. Yeah, I know. It seems games seem to run better on there. Um, it seems like well, when I used it and tried it out, it seemed to run a lot better than Unity. Yeah. Unity was kind of awful with processing things, running things smoothly. Um, other than that, um, I'll be excited for it though. Yeah. I'm, I'm sure it's gonna be really good. Yeah. Well, let's take a look at this video and. Um... We're definitely going to be pausing it in the middle and giving our thoughts throughout, so let's take a look. Sweet. <laughs> dude, right off the bat, the the yeah. the the cross, dude. <laughs> I don't uh, remember seeing that the first time I watched this video, too, unless this, this is a different one. <laughs> but I, I was kind of like, oh, okay, cool, and then I think I opened this one to watch it, thinking it was the same video, and yes. I see him just like, eh. Yeah, Christ compels you. <laughs> it's awesome. It's awesome. Unlike some of its peers, The Forest, the survival horror game from Canadian-based studio Ed Knight Games, delivered on not just the popular Gather and Craft survival game format, but also added a surprisingly complex and equally banana story featuring cannibals and mutants. With the immediate arrival of its long me out. Se uh, I'm, seizure. I'm excited to see the, you know, um, okay, here's some spoilers. Sorry if anybody hasn't played the game, but I kind of want to talk about spoilers because it's been, been so out long. for a long time now. Yeah. Um, you know, inside the mountains, they have the whole, like, you know, the military, like, secret military experimental base going on. 
um, I'm excited to see how they're going to be expanding that because that was like a really huge deal in the first game. But you got to explore the base. But if I remember correctly, you didn't really get too much backstory of why everything was happening. I just know that it was an experiment. They were shooting you know, planes down that were flying over. And that's why you have all the mutated survivors and then they would mute. Yeah. Them. So, so I don't know what I, what I gathered from that. Cause that's, that's the thing that I noticed about the forest that I'm kind of hoping that they do with sons of the forest. Um, is cause I, I've never played a game before where you had to figure things out visually. Mm -hmm. Like they had cut scenes towards the end and it was kind of like, what's going on. You had to pay attention and figure out what was happening. Yeah. But I've never played a game before. I've always played games where they're like, you watch cutscene, you know, and then, you know, let's say you have some character, they find out that somebody else killed their brother or something, and then you figure that out, and you're like, oh, this is a huge moment, he's finally figuring out this moment. Oh, that's who that was, he did this thing way in the past, and that was that guy, what? You know, you figure out all those things. This game doesn't explain everything in a linear fashion or explain it in the typical fashion most games and movies do. Yeah. And so you really had to visually look at your screen, what's in front of you, and kind of like figure out what's going on. And what I gathered from it, what happened in this game, the first one, The Forest, is that you find out the, there's a button, you know, you could press it, you could not press the button. You know, if you press the button, it would shoot down a plane. Yes. That plane would crash. But that button was there on purpose where it would, they would purposely crash the planes so they would have more people on the island as test subjects to then test their, use their experiments on them. And then that's what was creating more of these, what we thought in the beginning was cannibals. It's not, they're all just mutated people based off of the experience they were doing. So they're doing this on purpose. And that's what I gathered was I was like, once we got up in there and kind of looked at the story and figured out what was happening, I was like, wait, all these are just test subjects. They're not cannibals. These are, <laughs> you know, all this is just because of like some bad scientist, dude. So I'm kind of hoping the the second game runs the same way as in, you know, there's no cutscenes with like characters with dialogue and kind of just explaining to you in a very basic way. I'm kind of hoping that they go uh, the same route they did with the first one where you just kind of like look at it and figure things out um, as the game is playing along. I feel people who play the game just enough to not actually beat the game, it, it's kind of like an iceberg, right? They just got the tip yeah. of everything, and then once you go under, you see the rest of the game. And I feel bad for people who didn't actually finish it. <laughs> yeah. Well, that was us for the longest time. Like That's why I think this game stuck with me for the longest time. If, there, if anything, I could say this was probably, I don't know, it might have been a couple years ago when we were playing it. Out of all the AAA titles that you can have, this one was probably my favorite game of that year playing. Because mm. one, it took us so long to get into the <laughs> the tunnels. Yes. Because <laughs> they're so scary to, to traverse through. I love the cave um, system. That was my favorite. But the cave system was the best thing because that's what pushed us forward yeah. into realizing there's actually a story um, and that there's an end game um, to this game. So... I'm sure it's going to be as as big as the first one, maybe even bigger. Uh, there's definitely a lot more stuff added to the game, but I'm hoping that it's going to have that big, satisfying feeling that the first game had in terms of you're kind of like learning what is happening in this game. Yeah. We get it's a prequel, but I'm kind of hoping that there's a little more that we can take from it and learn instead of just going in with the previous knowledge we had with the first game and then just kind of like, okay, here's we already know what's happening prior but is there anything else happening? Is there anything else we didn't get to find out in the first game that we that's, now get to experience in this new game? Yeah, that's kind of what I'm concerned about because, you know, seeing the map already from just from this little screenshot right here, mm. it looks to be like the same exact map we already explored. So that's I'm, what I'm thinking. I'm hoping that they expand maybe the island a lot more. Like, yeah, you get to go behind the mountain and there's a lot more back there that we didn't see. I don't know. I'm just trying to think, you know. Possibly, because I know it stopped at the uh, the snow mountain, and you couldn't like do any Skyrim jumping. Yeah, <laughs> you couldn't do any no clipping and all that to try to get to areas you're not supposed to be at. But but I do I'm remember. Hoping they, yeah, I hope they did expand that. You could climb everything. I remember they had yeah like that. Um, there was like no uh, what do you call it? Like there was like clipping on the mountain. So I remember right. I would literally scale like the whole mountain, and you could get to like, yep. the top. <laughs> <laughs> which i love when games let you do that you can just climb anything right it's pretty cool 
Oh, all right, let's keep going. Sequel, Sons of the Forest, comes not only the pressure to top the beloved experience of the original, but also to add some new and increasingly wild surprises. And based on the five hours that I've played God, so far, I'm not creepy. only excited <laughs> about the sequel's potential, Dude, but also... This, the... this cave looks really good, too. I was going to say the details in the cave and everything Yeah. crazy. And I'm excited for that. If you notice here on the left side, uh, there's actually the there's like a the you know like in the original. I remember I think you had to put like batteries for your flashlight and everything. Right. So I think here it actually shows you like charging and all that. So oh, that's dope. Like it shows when your your flashlight's actually gonna run out, or <clears> that could be how much power the um like how bright right. the flashlight's actually flashing. So I don't know. But I noticed huh. right here too. If you notice the original uh, skull on the stick yep. that he's holding. <laughs> that's awesome. That. That's cool confident that end night could revolutionize the survival genre oh and that was the other thing i noticed too you don't have to pause it either but uh you can hold flashlights while shooting because oh, cool. I, I know you can hold your uh lighter last time while you're doing that but i don't know if you were able to do a torch or a flashlight at the same time wild and disturbing narrative rabbit hole populated by flesh hungry mutants sons of the forest largely oh my god that part substituting your son for a missing billionaire it's a basic idea but one that allows you to jump straight into the action allowing players who have no intention of progressing the rescue mission to solely focus on building their very own lakeside resort with some friends right away just like its predecessor that's you can cool play, i like build, that shot right there cause chaos with seven of your friends the, the water looks cool. really good yeah it does. Of the forest has to offer in single player like the little bugs around the fire is that even it's gonna when you make my solo, computer burn like a toaster <laughs> rtx yeah at the very start of Sons of the Forest, you're introduced to Calvin, an elite soldier who not only survived the helicopter crash that stranded you on the island, but is also very much along for the survival ride as an AI companion. While Calvin if you want to pause it there real quick. Yeah. So I know they're going to kind of explain him a little bit more, but this was a feature I'm actually excited for because I feel like one if you're a huge fan of like fallout 4 and i get it a lot of people hate having the dog companion yeah. <laughs> at least people i've talked to everybody hated him he just followed everywhere uh -huh. my experience with the dog was i remember when i first played fallout 4 i went through this area i was like crouching trying to be sneaky and there was these bombs so i was like okay well let me defuse them or go around them yeah the dog walks all the way through them turned around looked at me didn't even set them off but when he turned around and they looked at me they all went off and killed me oh. and so <laughs> so like you know ai sometimes can be dumb they can get in the way but this one i'm actually excited for because um you know i feel like if you're gonna really enjoy a game it's gonna be nice to have somebody that's still there whether you know it's a real person or not because it sounds like this feature i think they explained it even if you're playing co-op yeah. he's still going to be around uh, this companion, he'll still be around, um, and then that'll, that'll help you out. So, like, let's say if you need sticks, you know, you need rocks, have them do all the mundane stuff, you know, and you can always go venture off and then, you know, search for food or other important things you're trying to find. Yeah. So that's the nice thing is you're gonna be able to have that extra work, especially if you're playing solo play. Yeah, no, definitely, definitely. That's that's cool. And also, doesn't this also help people who, if they don't have friends? <laughs> Uh, yeah, so that's so yeah. really going to help me out. Oh, it. <laughs> <laughs> but it's also good for, like, you know, if you want to play offline and you don't want to deal with real-life people, you can just have this guy help you out. So that's cool. Right. You know. Mm. Things are going to get done you know, about twice as fast. His injuries yeah. have not, perhaps surprisingly, prevented him from being extremely helpful. In an apparent effort to replicate the multiplayer experience for solo players, Calvin will follow you around and respond to commands oh, issued cool. by a bunch of handy quick select options on a notepad. He'll take orders to see out your less than desirable busy work, such as chopping down trees and gathering logs. That's awesome. During my hands-on, the value of having yeah, an the way AI he companion walks, though, is so robotic. Noticing. I know. There was a huge benefit to sending Calvin off to find resources, while my co-op partner and I maybe he is a robot structure. I'd regularly turn around to find a fresh pile of logs for our disposal. Think so. With Calvin already on his merry way to collect. I think it's the AI. Somewhat provide company for so Look at the way he walks. Because right there looks a little more realistic. Yeah. It's when he's holding things, he walks a little. In the busy work of a survival. Little odd. This affords more time to either sculpt a masterpiece or plow forward on the cannibal killing quest calvin has a mind of his own though well at least to some degree he sits down to rest when he gets tired and seeks water when he's thirsty 
He'll also become upset if you treat him poorly, which makes him less productive and thus decreases the value as a companion. And if you decide you're not interested in having a worker bee along for the ride, you have the option to disable Calvin in the most realistic way possible. Shoot him in the head and you'll remove him from your session. Shoot him in the head. I laughed at you. I was like, oh, you can disable it. And they're just like, yeah, just shoot him in the head. So brutal. It's like they're like old yellering him. Just take him out of the backyard. During my playtime, I caught a glimpse of Virginia, a mutant with three arms and three legs. She quickly scarpered once I approached her and definitely had more of a skittish. So, just to pause it here for a second, I know like they're going to talk about her more, but. I know you were mentioning that uh, Virginia, this new, another AI that's actually going to be a companion, she's going to be able to help you, but she has like mutated arms and stuff, right? Yeah, I think it shows a little later on that it shows her. Because it was the uh, the woman at the lake. The yeah, this one right here. That she mm. be and will become attached to you yeah, look at that. The look shotgun that. and the pistol. Dude, <laughs> the third crap. arm. That is terrifying. That's I want to have her though as the companion. Yeah. <laughs> That's really cool. I, I wonder if you can get bitten by the cannibals and actually get your own stuff like that, I wonder. Or maybe it's just for the AI, probably. See, yeah, I think that would be interesting. Because, like, I already know in the first game, they had the feature where you would watch, like, your sanity levels. Yeah. And if it got too high, I think your guy would, like, die or something. Mm. I think if this game doesn't have it, it would be awesome if they had a feature where you can try to fine tune and balance the insanity and you know in the sanity levels. That'd be cool. But but if you can actually, let's say you, you know, you transform. So I'll, I'll just kind of take like Tarkov for instance. Tarkov, you know, there's like light bleeds, there's heavy bleeds, all that stuff. So there's different meds to treat light bleeds, you know, heavy bleeds, breaks, all those different things. I w think it would be awesome if they made a feature where you can kind of figure out how to maintain mutations and if you got different abilities by uh, mutating. So like, let's say you have like that third arm, you know, or, you know, like, yes. and uh, you can, <laughs> and then you can, you know, kind of figure out those, uh, the mutations, but then be able to manipulate it and be able to maintain it to your advantage so you can do more things you know like yeah. let's say you chop down a tree you know yeah you, know, you could do two axes or something you know cut it down in half the time all that sort of stuff i think it'd be awesome if they did that don't think they will at all i think that they're going to leave that up to these companions um but it would be a cool idea though to be able to explore hey you never know maybe a dlc in the future either that or a mod or yeah or a mod <laughs> yeah. you could play as the ai Right, that'd be awesome. That'd be cool. Should you be kind to her? They compared her instincts to that of an elusive and independent cat, which stands in opposition to Calvin's lovable and obedient dog. <laughs> the blew his head off. Aren't limited to just companions, though. On our expedition, we came across several groups of enemies, ranging from a cluster of cannibals to a mob of monstrosities, each demonstrating their own impressive decision-making abilities. It felt like my enemies were thinking and making active decisions Gosh, based they can on climb the trees now. Actions, but also yep. their situations and environment. Well, they, they used to be able to climb trees in the first one. Games, enemies did they? I don't remember them. Yeah, they did. Patrol and hmm. attack. But in Sons of the Forest, some yeah, because sometimes they would jump up in the tree, areas, climb it, and they'd jump down on you. What I oh, do, while others would charge in aggressively, only to back down when things didn't go their way. I saw enemies consoling their fallen friends, changing their clothes depending on the weather conditions, and even trying to destroy That's my cool. newly erected home when my back was turned. It was clear to see that the enemy's brains were not only following coded rules, but also adapting their thoughts based on the external influences. The developers explained to me that certain enemies with leadership... I love the... Uh, sorry, I just wanted to pause real quick. I love the, the weather now that there's going to be like snow everywhere. Yep. Because I remember in the first game, um, if you wanted to have snow, you had to go to the snow, right? But now it seems like the right. whole island's going to get covered in rain. Or They're going to have dynamic or... weather in... Yeah, day and night cycle still. Yeah, that's really cool. And I yeah. wonder if the water is going to play a bigger difference now because of the water Maybe. physics and stuff. Now I noticed that look really nice. I wonder if right. they're going to be able to like flood caves and stuff like that. Like that would be kind of cool. That would be cool. You know, like while you're I traveling. Think... Yeah, the one thing that I really like too is just kind of look at these enemy player models, the ones that look a little more normal. Yeah. Like they're not they're not mutated. I kind of like that they did that now compared to the first game where some of them just looked like yeah like the little ones that looked like Gollum, Gollum, you know. You had the ones that had like six arms, the worm looking ones, you know, you had the big old uh boss dudes, the the chargers. Kind of like this guy right I, here. Yeah, I like how they have these guys that look like they're from Mad Max. Yeah. Cuz these guys 
looks like that they're kind of separate. Like it looks like they're almost technically with the same tribe. Like they're still with the mutated ones. Like they can tell they're on the same team. But I like how they have these guys where they look a little more kind of, you know, um, they've learned to live off the land. They're kind of still in that beginning stages of um, mutating. But they haven't mut- either they haven't mutated yet or they have mutated. They're kind of on their way, but they've just survived here like for so long on their own that they just, um, you know, have just kind of like learned how to survive on the land. And they're just kind of these feral sort of people. Um, I kind of like the idea, but I'm not really sure if they are in the beginning stages of like the, the uh, mutation or not. So I'm hoping that the game explains it a little bit more, but I like that they kind of separated them. Like they have these different stages you could tell, but then also, um, you know, it's not just the same assets, the same player models they've had in the first game. There's some, a few different, different ones that, you know, weren't in the first game. Yeah, no, that's cool. Yeah. I didn't, that, I didn't think about that actually. That's a good detail. Mm-hmm. Not only following coded rules, but also adapting their thoughts based on the external influences. The developers explained to me that certain enemies with leadership qualities can influence the decisions of others and even put yeah, ideas in their ranks, such as religion, and that each uh, individual uh. has their own tastes, desires, and proclivities. Oh my god. How many shots did they take? The forest, I didn't really get a sense of how <laughs> like also didn't go for a headshot either. How much yeah. it will affect your experience. That's true. But the teasers I saw filled my mind with dozens of possibilities. I saw enemies adapting to change in their ecosystem and weather conditions, which now that's cool. seasons that change as you progress. I even accidentally yeah, triggered really a cool. war after I stupidly opened the entrance to the game's complex oh underground cave network and released a faction of mutants into the domain of another tribe. My simple decision caused their living. Okay, so there are different tribes then. Them to adjust their focus. Mm. And after See if they can fight each other. Chaos. So it's not so it's not just all of them with you. There's different tribes set around the island apparently. They're trying to take basically be like king over each other. <laughs> yeah, so I think the feral ones are probably the ones that have, you know, let's say they crash landed. Yeah. They're there, they've been there for so long, and they're kind of just on the island, they forgot who they are, they're just feral people now. And then it looks like then there's those other ones that are like mutated and if they kind of cross paths then they'll fight each other so that's cool. that's dope i wonder if they're gonna have like a like a um like an honor system where if you want to go join one of the tribes and you can like be a part of them that'd be kind of neat that'd be awesome and then you can have them to like help you fight off the other tribes you know and like call for right. help and stuff like that like if you shoot up like a flare up in the sky or something and it's like oh crap he needs help and they'll come over and help <laughs> you or i don't know i'm just trying to think of like ways that you could you know, attract them to come over and fight with you or something like that would be kind of neat. Right. So you, like, That'd be swear sick. Allegiance to like a tribe, you know. Can't wait to see how flexible this system can be. As you'd expect, the titular forest makes a return, looks pretty. and it looks better than ever. From the complex density of foliage to the gorgeous rainfall and beautifully lit cave stalactites, amongst the hanging corpses and mutant fetuses, the graphical oh, power he's showed him. Shot him. It was a joy to explore. Dude, no more stab anymore. I'm just gonna blast him. <laughs> <laughs> With a tease of bunkers, villages, and God knows what else in a world that's promised to be four times larger than the original, I can easily see myself getting lost and then sidetracked in the wilderness for hours on end. But at its core, Sons of the Forest is a survival game, and so when you're not exploring, there's a good chance you're building. The construction tools have been significantly overhauled for the sequel. Gone are the floating blue ghost building blocks, replaced by user-friendly, realistic presentation of wilderness carpentry. That's Instructions cool. are more literal, and actions are contextual. Instead of just loading resources into a ghost version of the final product, you're now free to, with magnetic and snapping assistance, manually place logs and sticks in the direction that you'd like, allowing for a complete customization of your structure instead of That's following dope. a predetermined design. My partner, Calvin, and I immediately set to work on put building a to shame. domicile of our own. D- basically. <laughs> a traditional design immediately blossomed when we realized the only limitation was our imagination. I hope they don't have the invisible ceiling. And thus the structural yeah. points I know, I, I think, remember that. Yeah, because I think me and Michael tried doing it, and I believe we hit an invisible ceiling. We couldn't build it <laughs> any higher. Gosh. We were trying to build our Trump Tower. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> we were trying to build it. We got to a certain point, and we couldn't build any higher. Opportunity for expression. I was informed that the option of the more traditional oh, blueprint cool. builds is still there for the purists, but I found the DIY construction far more appealing than the IKEA approach. Then, of course, there's the optional story to follow. 
From the teasers in the trailers, this is implied to be bigger and perhaps even crazier than the original, and hopefully continues directly on from the forest's cliffhanger. But amongst the time spent constructing and fighting off hordes of cannibals, I didn't really get a sense of how the story was going to go beyond the initial premise. It did feel very familiar to the story of the forest though, which I guess makes sense in the term of dropping players right into the action. But I'd be lying if I said I didn't have concerns that it could potentially retread old ground. My hope is this simply serves as a jumping off point to go in some truly crazy directions, and it develops a narrative through line from the first game that still feels cohesive. But time will tell once I get my hands on the full game and manage to pull myself away from building a replica of the Ewok village and destroying the lives of the unsuspecting locals. Sons of the Forest appears to evolve and build on every aspect of its predecessor, with a focused goal of realism That's and cool. developing a flexible ecosystem. And it feels like the Ish. building blocks are there to create something truly special. But its killer feature is the addition of impressively sophisticated and smarter AI enemies and companions that could not only provide a huge leap forward for the series, but the survival <laughs> game genre as a whole. And if you like that video and That's want to cool. find out more Nice. So what's your uh, <coughs> what's your final thoughts on the forest so far? Sons of the Forest. Um, I mean, for the most part, it's like I like the little features, like the different changes that they have, subtle changes, yeah, you know, maybe big ones. Well, especially with the building, like that's actually a huge one. Um, I don't mind the predetermined features for the building. But that's what's really nice with the whole snapping feature, more advanced building, more DIY, yeah. is that's kind of where I got a little stuck with sometimes when you're trying to build something, especially if you're trying to build a building and then build stairs. Um, if you didn't build it, if you're trying to customize it yourself and do custom walls, floors, and all that, if you didn't like kind of do the math and figure it out, things for sure did not work out and the whole thing just turned out to look junk like janky but then also let's say if you were doing a second story you have the stairs and it goes up when you would break through the floor sometimes it would like go off a little bit further than you where you expect where the way you would expect to cut and then the whole floor like the stairs would just break yeah. or you would cut it and then you had to cut a way bigger hole than you needed for the stairs. So that way, when you're got walking up the stairs, you don't hit your head on the floor. So you don't have to crouch and then kind of like jankly as if it's like a tree house crouch to go through the stairs and then up through the hole in the floor for the second floor. Mm, okay. So this one, I think, is going to be a lot nicer where you can do a little more DIY advanced cutting and building. So I'm excited for that. So hopefully it makes things a little bit easier for the more customized buildings. Um, yeah. Other than that, I'm just excited just to explore the map, see how the game's going to be. Um, as they were explaining, you know, game's going to be a little bit bigger. It's going to be bigger, um, more things to come, a lot bigger things, crazier than the first story, which I thought the first story was already crazy. Yeah. So I'm just kind of happy and excited to see, you know, what's, you know, the hubbub, you know, what's it's going to be about, you know, and how crazy it's going to be. I know this game hasn't come out yet. But I'm excited to see what they're going to do after this game because mm -hmm. I feel like this game, like he mentioned in the video, it is special already. So right. I think this is just a jumping point of where they can go. And me right. personally, I could see them make a DayZ, you know, size map right. coming up uh, where you can have that scale of having For a, sure. a huge map where you have like an open world with other players and all that. And right. You're trying to fight like amongst the tribes and. So I don't know. I'm I'm excited yeah. to see how they're going to expand after Sons of the Forest. Mostly. Well, and I'm hoping eventually, because that's the one thing I've noticed in the first game, which I don't know if you want to kind of look up the ending on YouTube real quick. Yeah. yeah. Um, if you might be able to do that. <clears throat> but I know, I could have swore the ending of the first game. I know they're in public, and I think he has the whole freak out, the kid, right? I think he has the, the freak out in public or something at the... Uh, the forum there's like some sort of forum they're at uh, and they finish it and he freaks out but then if you notice the second game it was saying that it kind of continues you know or it's you know before the first game so i don't know if you want to try to fast forward all the way to the end because it should show them where they're back in the credits right here yeah where he's in like the studio or whatever yep yeah so there they're at the studio later. talking about the story Gosh, she's all yeah, kids freak, yeah, yeah, the kids freaking out. They're talking about their story, but they're back in the city. 
and that's what I'm kind of like hoping for. Yeah. Is I'm hoping if not in this game, if this game doesn't go, um, you know, back to the city, I'm hoping if they have like a third game, maybe they'll explore things and show off the forest, but like in modern, not modern times, but have it back in the city. That would be cool. That's what I'm kind of hoping for is eventually maybe they'll have a forest where you're back in the city and then all the cannibals and other stuff happens here. It'd be kind of interesting called the city. They'd have to call it the forest. (laughs) Right. You know, or it's called the city, you know, like, or maybe they could have like a last of us type game set in like the city. Yeah. That'd be cool. And see how like the, how it's kind of gone global. Like here you can see in the city and it's spread out throughout the population and stuff. So. Yeah. Well, it's freaking cool. out. I know. <laughs> <laughs> it's right to the whole Joker scene. Yes. <laughs> you, made you, you, me, you, you made fun of me. You made fun of me, Murray. Oh, man. Yeah, it's going to be fun, though. I'm excited for the sequel, and hopefully it lives up to expectations. Sorry, I didn't have the Re- audio on. I don't get it. Let's try to figure out what's happening. Re, why can't you just be normal? Yes. Re. <laughs> hey, it's me at night when I see my uh, demons. <laughs> <laughs> Paralysis demon. Get a big laptop. Three thousand. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> wakes up but yeah i think if you um i know he showed on one of the other videos it was the last one we were watching and i showed them in the city and there was like a thing kind of bubbling under their arm um i'm just hoping eventually they'll make their way to the city i think that would just be a cool take yeah, no, I agree. I'm, I'm totally. I know. Idiot. I know it's called the forest, but yeah, yeah. <laughs> but and then the sense of the forest. But I know that's kind of another thing, though, is the forest. I feel like it could still work because one, that's where everything started. That's where everything's at is the forest, that yeah. original forest they're at. But I think they still could expand where that could be off in a city. Um, I just think it would just be kind of cool to see. Yeah. No, I agree. Mm-hmm. I agree. Well. I don't have any more final thoughts on this. Do you? That's about it. No, just excited <laughs> to see what's going to happen with the game. I'm sure we'll come out with more, like, when the game comes out, maybe we'll talk about things further. Yeah. Kind of some of the uh, initial thoughts and experiences on it. I'm sure we'll do that. Oh, yeah. I'm sure there's a lot of videos we can put out on when, when it comes yeah. out. You know? Oh, yeah. All right, guys. Well, thank you for joining us tonight. Um, we'll see you in the next video. And feel free to comment and you know, uh, tell us what you guys are excited about for Sons of the Forest. Let us know if there's any particular features that you're looking forward to. Um, tell us how your experiences were playing the first one and then what you're excited to play with the new one. Um, but yeah, we'll catch you guys on the next video. Thank you. Appreciate it. Later. <laughs>